Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the fourth video in the SDM32 I2C Slave series, and we will again continue to look at yet another method of receiving the data. This is probably going to be the last method we are covering just to receive the data, and so far it is the most dependable method for the same. Since it is the continuation from the previous video, this is going to be a very small video covering one specific method. In this method, the master will send the data, which consists of the information about how many bytes it is going to send, and the data itself. So let's start where we left the previous video, that is part 3. Define a variable, to keep track of whether the first byte has been received or not. Inside the address callback function, let's put our code inside the condition, if the first byte hasn't been received yet. Here we will receive the first byte of data using the option of the first frame. This first byte is actually the number of data bytes the master is going to send next. Once the first byte is received, the receive complete callback is called. Here again we will first check if the variable is set to 1 or not. If not, then set the variable to 1, indicating that we have received the first byte of the data. Increment the rx count variable, so that the data can be stored at the updated location in the buffer. And finally receive the data at the updated position in the rx buffer. The number of data bytes the slave will receive, is the same as the first byte received by it. We will call the function with the option of the last frame, since we are not receiving more data. Once the final data byte is received, the callback will be called again, but this time the variable is set to 1. This means the reception is complete, and finally we can process the data. So update the rx count variable with the total number of bytes received. Reset the first byte received variable, so that the entire process can start again. And finally call the process data function. This idea is very simple, let's assume that the master wants to send 8 bytes of data. So it can simply send the first bytes as the number 8, followed by the actual 8 bytes of data. Thus it has to send a total of 9 bytes. We will see this in working now. Let's build and debug the code. We will check the rx buffer in the debugger itself. You can use the simple transmit function for the master to send the data. Let me put a breakpoint inside the process function. Let's assume the master wants to send 2 bytes of data, so it has to send the first byte as 2, informing the slave about how many bytes of data it is sending next. And then send the 2 data bytes. The actual data will start storing from the second byte of the rx buffer. The rx count represents the total number of bytes received by the slave. This includes the first information byte also. Also note that the error counter does not increment in this case. Actually if you send the data properly, informing how many bytes are coming next, the slave will never encounter any error. Let's assume that you want to extract the actual data from it. I am using the memcopy function to do so. The actual data start from the offset of 1, and the total data bytes are equal to the rx count minus 1. This is because the rx count also includes the information byte, so we remove it for the data bytes. Let's try to send 3 data bytes. We have received the 3 main data bytes along with an information byte. So our slave driver is working well so far. Keep in mind that the master should send the number of data bytes as mentioned in the information byte, or else there might be errors. That is it for the video. I hope you understood different ways in which the slave can receive the data. You can use either of the methods we cover, depending on how much control you have on the master. In the next video, we will define some memory for the slave, and the master will write the data to a specific memory location. It is equivalent to the slave having the registers to store some data, and later can be read by the master. 
This is it for today. Leave comments in case of any doubt. The link to download the code is in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.